Secretary, discussion on entitlement spending, Medicare, Medicaid, food stamps, Social Security, and our budget deficits, what actions will you take to control entitlement spending in order to balance the budget? The first thing I would do if I was in Congress right now or when I get elected is to reverse this trend toward uh, big government. And one of the things I would do is end the entitlements, uh, decrease, we have to reevaluate Social Security and how it functions. One of the reasons why we're in this mess now is because too many politicians on both sides of the aisle over the past 20 years have not really done anything about real reform when it, con when it concerns Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. So we, look, we have to look at real reform. The other thing we've got to do is make sure, of course there's not much we can do right now in our capacity as candidates except lobby and, and maybe make calls to our congressmen, but we need to stop this atrocious Obamacare bill. And I'm hearing more and more every day now, there's good news out there in Horizon, Matt and Jim and uh, Mr. Smith, that uh, many states across the country, there's over 12 of them now, with Virginia leading the way, are saying, no, we're not going to accept socialized medicine, Obamacare, and then their state legislatures, according to the 10th Amendment and the Sovereignty Movement, state's uh, Federal Nullification Act that goes back to 1798, the states are waking up and doing their constitutional duty and saying no more of this. And I will continue that trend. If I get elected to the U.S. Congress, no Obamacare, no cap and trade, no expansion of entitlements, and no more bloated federal government. Thank you. Matt? Some of you in the audience have heard me say that when I'm out and about at these county fairs and these socials and so on, over and over again, men and women will come up to me and they will get right up near my face and they will say, now if I vote for you, what will you do for me? Now I'll tell you what, the more I think about that as I drive home at night, the reality is it is that mindset that has gotten us into the situation we're in today. Americans have come to expect that their government will provide them with everything, dealing with every aspect of their lives. And unfortunately, many have actually grown dependent upon the government. I think one of the first things that I will focus on if I'm elected your congressman, and actually I talked to a group last night and this is what I told them. I'm not running for Congress to go to Washington to pass new programs, new policies, new government legislation that is gonna give society in America new benefits. I'm running for Washington, for the U-House House of Representatives, because I want to focus on eradicating and eliminating those programs and policies and procedures and huge expense packages that are racking up our national deficit and keeping us from being prosperous. The areas of focus, when we look at reducing the size and the expense of government, we're gonna to have to take a look at Social Security. It's gonna be very difficult, but we've got to modify the program. And by that I mean, we have to, yes, we've made promises to some of our retirees and to those that will soon retire, and we've got to honor those promises. But we've also got to take a look now at, for those that are just starting their working career, we need to say to those in their 20s, those in their 30s, you're going to have to be a part of something different. Maybe it's personal retirement accounts. They sound like a good idea. When it comes to Medicare and Medicaid spending, yes, we're going to have to clean up the fraud, and it appears by most accounts there's a great deal. Thank you. Jim? Thank you. <clears throat> well, I can tell you that, that uh, I am definitely one who has taken over a small government, city of Wadsworth, that was actually running deficit spending, and I can tell you what I did. First and for foremost, I froze spent the spending. The number one thing, and if I, to, you know, the answer to the question of the federal government, the number one thing I would do is I would freeze all discretionary spending except for defense. All right? And after that, I would look at you know, any new legislation that came out, they would have to have 72 hours to look at it, every congressman, before you vote on it. You would not vote for anything that did not have 72 hours to look at. And also, we would want the opportunity to replace anything. When we, when we had so many additional programs in Washington, we already have ones that aren't working. In, in Wadsworth, in the city of Wadsworth, when I was mayor, I was able to take a budget deficit, I was able to reduce it, by freezing non-discretionary expenses, getting costs in line, eliminating wasteful spending, and then turning around and bringing the economy back within that 
city. And you can do it little by little. You can take things like this. John Bocheri sends these out. $66,000 in spending to tell you what he's doing in Washington. We don't need to spend these kind of dollars in Washington. Take 66000 times 435 um, congressmen. You start to see, you start eliminating some of these little dollars. It's one dollar at a time that will multiply into a lot of savings. And ultimately what we did in Wadsworth, and for those people that lived in Wadsworth, know that I balanced the budget and I left it with a surplus. And you can do it in a small setting and you can do it in Washington too, one step at a time. Thank you. Doyle? One of the problems, well, let me give you three examples. A man named Jose Romero was in Chimeo, New Mexico. Someone gave him a loom and he made uh, five rugs. He sold them for $125 a piece. He went, was on welfare, and when he told them that he had sold them, they deducted every cent that he had made from his welfare. He was left with nothing. And he ended up taking the loom, putting it beside, and covering it up. We've got to arrange that people who do try to work benefit from it. We have a case where a lot of people will not go to work because they're on unemployment, and that would be cut off completely. Give them a half, take it at a half a dollar of each area. And another case in which the woman uh, got a better job and had to give it up because the Section 8 housing told her she'd have to move. Our government now penalizes people who are trying to work. 